completely transformed the room, hasn't oh, it? Absolutely. Into the new washers that have been recommended are slightly smaller and they're no cheaper. Why is that, bro? It's like they say, Mars bars have got smaller as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when the fittings and the plates go all go on, all looks in the nice same line, doesn't it? Just that little bit of finishing detail, guys. Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot of work done. Brian's been the right hand guy on this project. What me and Brian are gonna do, we're gonna go around each of the rooms, talk to you about all the things that we've been doing. In this first room, we've ripped loads and loads oh, of stuff out of this, haven't we, Brian? Yeah, the floor was up here, everything was a total mess. And when, when we looked at this room, we thought to ourselves, thought we've gotta make this room into a more workable room. This floor, I think was up here, Brian. It was, there was two steps coming into this room and then they had the floor up here. So uh, I don't know what they were doing when they'd done that, but we've dropped everything Everything, put in new joists, uh, new flooring. We're doing the stud work and insulating boards. So a lot's gone on in this room. Completely transformed the room, hasn't oh, it? Absolutely. Into yeah. another kind of different space. Yeah, and, yeah. And you probably noticed, guys, what we've done is that it's really key when we've been doing this is to make sure we've used reclaimed boards. We've then used three inch cut class nails as well. One of the things that uh, Brian had just mentioned earlier, one thing we had to do is rip off all of the old plaster, rip off all the old joists, and literally there was like two or three layers of different joist no. heights. Oh, oh there. great, yeah. It was absolutely. the right mess, yeah, wasn't it? It really was. I mean, they just cut trees and used them. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> there was no kind of big major form of triangulation. So what we've done is we've put in a lot big heavier duty joists. Now you're probably noticing at the moment, what we've done is we've got a reclaimed floor going to chipboard floor. This is a cost saving exercise because obviously when we have a bespoke door made in here, which we'll make ourselves, when the doors go across, then all of this is storage space. So at the end of the day, we spoke to the client and said, look, we, we can't see the sense because this is really expensive now, this reclaimed board. And he agreed with us. So what we've done is put chipboard flooring in here. We put the reclaimed work, the parts that you can actually see. We're then saving a little bit of money for the client and obviously it speeds up our production time as well. Now what we have done here is we've used some insulated plasterboard because there was no U value to this roof whatsoever, was there? No, there wasn't, no. The only thing that was protecting this room from any drafts or anything was the roofing foul. Also, uh, the roof has used TRX Gold, yeah. and that gives us a nice uh, air gap in between the two as well, which creates uh, warmth. So guys, this floor, wasn't it bright? It's yeah. a bit of a sorry state, wasn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. What we've done here, we've used a lot of the reclaimed floor, we've lifted from old bathrooms through the whole of the house, and what we've done, we've actually pieced a bit in here, the clients give us a bit of a brief, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, and then we piece into here, back to the floor. The lads have been piecing into this system here, really, really nicely in here. All of this was all broken. It was really, really badly damaged. We've even pulled the reclaimed floor through this void here. So it actually then looks really nice. It's not just cut off and then just put up by the doorway. We've made sure we staggered the joints, which is really, really important. All about the details, isn't it, guys? So one of the things is this detail down here. Now, some of you might have picked it up, but there's a small seat infill piece in here. We won't leave that in because what we'll do is we'll buy a, a wider reclaimed board and we'll actually buy it wide enough so it trims into here. We'll relift this one and this one and then put this then reclaimed board back in so it looks wider. It's just nicer because one of the things I do hate to see is like kind of small pieces put in and filled in like this. For me, it's a big no-no. We do have a couple of apprentices on and one of the apprentices is called, a lad called Miles. Really good lad. What do you yeah, do to him Miles, so far, bro? He's, he shows promise. He's really coming along strong. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he's been doing this art tray while he's been working with him. He's made a good uh, fist of it, uh, showing him how to get the angles on the skirting and so forth. And uh, yeah, he's yeah. a really good lad. Because that is quite, because the other thing, guys, is if you imagine when you're dealing with old stuff, like old architrave, old skirtings, we all know it's a bit of a ball ache to work with sometimes. You've got to clean it all down. You've got to prep it and get it ready. And to be fair, you know, now looking at that, that's his first bit of architrave. 
I've got to agree, Bright. He's done a really, really good job. I'm really, yeah. really pleased. I mean, absolutely. The joints are absolutely spot on. Joints are good up there as well. He's got yep. the margin just perfect as well. Because that's something I always look at. It doesn't matter where I go, whether it's a cafe, restaurant, somebody's house. I look at margins everywhere. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, the key thing is if you get the right people around you. I mean, Miles and Liam, who have been Liam's on the brickwork side, he isn't he? Is, mate. Yeah. Miles yeah, wants to be a, a carpenter, and uh, so. For me, he's shown all the right hallmarks that you want for a young apprentice who's really keen and eager to learn as well. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about the next room we're going to go into, Brian? Absolutely, because obviously, yeah. you've done, I can't take any of the glory for this <laughs> because you've done all the work. This in has this been room. my room of doom. This is, yeah, the room of doom, hasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I've been so, working under the candlelight on this so, one. So, obviously, when we first started, this was not a bathroom. This was just a room and we've converted it. And as you can see here, we promised we've already put the shower tray in so on this side and this side we've used a product called elements board which you can tie straight onto it's waterproof it's really good stuff uh, behind that rather than dab it we battened off got the buttons nice and straight and level and we also sunk the valve into the wall this this valve here and the reason being is we wanted to get the biggest shower tray in but we have to be careful with the door opening in uh, and we've just got 20 mil clearance on this point here where the door opens in. So that's an 800 offset shower tray, which is plenty uh, to have a nice good shower in and everything. So we've introduced a Velux window into this room, otherwise it would have been sort of really dark. And also the, a reason why we've introduced that Velux is the lavatory's going here, so you can literally stand at the lavatory and put your head in, or rest your head on the wall if you're a bit drunk. So that's why we put the Velux in there. We've introduced this board again, like we've done on the other one, just to uh, increase the U value of this room. This is insulated board again, same thing. We've also obviously put in a new floor, 22 mil ply. We've left this three mil gap in this ply for expansion, and then we're gonna over cover this with a uh, uncoupling mat and then tile it. We've also got points here for a shaver, for a mirror, all behind this wall. It didn't have to be sunk into the wall or plaster, so it just made life easier just to batten this wall off, guys. We've got those nice lights going in here as well. They're set back into, and you wouldn't even know they were lights if uh, uh, only when they're on. So they're, I really like them. I think you're right, bro. I think those flush lights are absolutely beautiful, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Because they look so like kind of trimless. Yeah. And there's just a really nice detail instead yeah. of having the flange onto yeah. the ceiling as well. That's it. We've also uh, put soundproof insulation in there just to give us a bit of you know a bit more sound protection from people coming upstairs and obviously using the bathroom and we also got some stuff off the ducting guys to insulate this wall as well again just to give it that you know a bit more uh, soundproofing and that from for this room earlier you were talking about aircon and obviously that was a massive thing we had to overcome oh, wasn't it? In, because like if you can imagine guys the aircon the size of the ducting was something like about 300 150, 400 yeah, mil yeah, by was, yeah. 180 mil, yeah. something like that, because obviously you've got to incorporate the insulation that goes around the door because right. of obviously sweating and everything yeah, else. That's right. And it was honestly what that did for us, trying to find the extra space was oh, just like huge, yeah. wasn't it? You know, we had to literally beg, borrow, and steal time everywhere we could yeah, it, to, it, get, to, uh, to get that in. When you look at it now, how we've hidden it all, and we use the board to obviously then get ready for tiling. One of the things that we also did in this other room is we put a new lining in, utilise the existing architraves, it's really important. We're going to do the whole of this top floor in existing architraves and also skirtings. Anything that's left is going to go into the next downstairs hallway. In here, Bright, we've yep. been insulating the uh, vaulted ceiling, making sure there's an insulated board on. We then use sound block boards onto this wall here, overboard did the ceiling, skimmed everything all out as a fresh because there's certain rooms we're having to skim out, don't we, Brian? There is, yeah, the because, plaster was just gone, yeah. Yeah, and one of the things I want to show you, we've been talking about this insulation board, guys, and one of the things that we've been doing is using these washers. We use these washers all of the time. You can see them, see, look, there's the drywall screw, and there's the washer, and it helps hold that board on there beautifully. Now, what you can see is that some of these are missing the washers. 
because we run out of washers as ever. So we've <laughs> had to order a load online. They've come in and actually the new washers that have been recommended are slightly smaller and they're no cheaper. Why is that, Brian? Oh, I've no idea, mate. You know, <laughs> you know smaller washer, you yeah. think it'd be cheaper, yeah. but it's not. It's, 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 it's like they say, Mars bars have got smaller as well. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. You still pay the same price. Yeah, you do. You might, yeah. Perhaps that's the theory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ten times. Now, the reason we've held fire with plastering this, we're actually putting all new windows in here. And what we're going to do is once the window wall comes out, we can then address the side and the top of the ceiling where it runs through there you can see the windboard groove in there we can pull that through get a nice nosing on this pull this up to that it will then finish it off beautifully then we've repaired the floor this floor was quite badly damaged we started to get radiator pipes up as well we worked the BTU out we've got these beautiful cast iron rads going in and what we've then been doing is we've just given it a quick miss coat because it's that thing of trying to push forward push forward push forward all the yeah. time guys because it's really key, because if you keep that mental thing going in the head that it continually feels like it's moving forward, it's good for the client, it's good for morale on the project, I always think it is. And, Absolutely. And, and then also, it, it makes you want to keep the place clean as well and tidy. It, it, it does, yeah. And it starts to look finished, and, and like you said, it, it makes it look cleaner and tidier, and. Uh, you know, a much better environment to work in. So what we've been doing in here, guys, is same system again, but the only thing we haven't done here, Bri, is we haven't over skimmed all the walls, have we, mate? No, we haven't, no. Some of the walls were okay. That wall was just patched, and he's done a really good job. You wouldn't notice, but no. uh, we didn't over skim that at all, really. The decorator's gonna fine fill that yeah. and line the paper it. Absolutely. And then certain areas then, that's all been freshly skimmed there. Yeah. The vaulted ceiling then's been insulated. We're having to Put two loft hatches in this place, aren't we? We are, yeah. Because you can imagine this has got like two pitched roofs and there's got a beautiful massive valley through the centre, which in fact that was one of the jobs I uh, bailed on and gave you. You did, did I? you did, yeah. Sorry, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I literally bailed on that. You got to be real the last one. Yeah. I had a bad throat at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I did after. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, what we did is that um, if you imagine all of the loft spaces, the client wanted to clear them all out, get them all tidied. Yeah. We poured all the insulation out between oh, us. God, yeah. So I did the first one with Ollie. Bro, you did this one with Miles. Well, I think, Miles. Yeah, 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 yeah. So clean them all out, then we hoover it all out, and then we get it prepped and ready then for all the new insulation going back inside. And obviously it's really key when you put that new insulation in, guys, do not squash it down because it's all about keeping the air in the insulation to allow it to get that U value that's always needed, okay guys? We do repairs to floors in here. We've got the first fix of electrics done. We've got the first fix of plumbing done, which are behind the plasterboard here. We've then got to make sure once the new window goes in, window board in, we can get it all finished boarded and then we can actually then get it all skimmed out then can't we mate we can once yeah. we've then got the windows in yep. got this all done this room's pretty much ticked Absolutely off and then the decorator finished. comes in does his magic so guys as i was saying about the floor upstairs these are some of the things that we've had to come across now if you just take a look down here guys look at this floor here this is how bad the floor was upstairs. Massive holes in it. If you're gonna sand it, all this up and stain it and wax it, you don't want all this, do you? That's why it's really key to use reclaim boards as we've done upstairs and we've cleaned them all up and then what we've done is we've then refitted new boards using cut class nails as well. So you can see the amount of work that's had to go in upstairs because look, you can see the unleavenness over there. Look at that, look at the state of that, guys. The doorway used to be here, guys. Now what we have done, we've moved it over and the reason we've moved it over because we wanted the doorway to become in the central of the room which will actually show you when we go into the room and you can see why we've done it just like to mention uh, this detail here what we reintroduced on these yeah. this is we built this stud wall here yeah. and uh, that's the original detail if you just like to have a look guys yeah. up there and uh, what we've done we recreated it on these stud walls here and that was on there originally but it was obviously destroyed so what we did is we stripped all the plaster off and reset it this is an old original one but I agree with with you bride this yeah. detailing this detailing here and the one behind you uh, there it's just like it looks magic doesn't it, it? Looks, it looks really yeah. really cool yeah. i know this is really like ocd you see how this socket here with actually a light switch this is how it lines through beautifully with the edge of this one so that gap 
is equal to this gap here because obviously when the fittings and the plates go, go on all looks in a nice same line doesn't it just that little bit of finishing detail guys we've done loads of work in here we've oh yeah i mean it's totally changed isn't it again reboard the ceiling again soundproof the ceiling these lights again which are really good i love, I love that detail as you can see it's bare wall at the moment but yeah this is going to get the full treatment again we've chopped out all of the plaster work which has been here haven't we yeah we've dropped the ceilings we've also then insulated with rock wool in between all the joists we've got the first fix of electrics in which have been capped now there was a boiler yeah. here wasn't that yeah, was, a cylinder yeah. here yeah, yeah. And there was another wall coming across here yeah. and there were these these amazing beautiful tiles in this room as well wasn't that <laughs> yeah. I mean they were like kind of I think they were maybe orange or I yeah, cracky, yeah. They, were, they were quite disgusting anyway yeah. one thing we have done is we've upgraded some of the joists because of the weight of the bath with the water in it and everything else and obviously we've used 18 mil ply on the floors we've got it all prepped and ready once the plumber and the electrician have finally done their first fix we'll move on to the next fix as we would call it and we'll start getting the elements board round we'll start getting the moisture board round we won't be able to plaster anything on this because we've got sash windows to change here we've got this window going to become a sash window as well yeah. now one thing you'll probably see somebody's drilled a hole through the archway that's nothing to do with it. that's what was there before the old gas boiler that's going to get re-bricked back up again and we're putting the new vent back up in this corner, up onto the ceiling, drilling through the wall, so it'll be nice and tucked and out of the way. Into the next room, we've been doing a lot of work in here. We had a really badly damaged ceiling here. Floor joists are completely collapsing on itself, and that's why all of this ceiling section here had to come down. Once we then assessed what was going on, we actually decided to strip the whole ceiling. We spoke to the client and said, look, let's strip the whole ceiling, get it down, let's re-insulate it all. We can then do the two repairs on the joists that need to be done on here, and then make the ceiling really, really sound. And obviously, structurally, the joists then upstairs because the way the existing people had loaded the dormer through onto that joist, so they had literally put all of the load on one joist, hadn't they, Brian? They had, yeah, the whole dormer. And so what we needed to do is we need to look at that and say, right, let's put another two joists along, triple joists, which then give enough support then to the vertical dorm, obviously then doubled up the rafters, but allowed us then to address this room in the right manner. And as you can see where we've had to over skin relevant walls, re-skin the ceiling. Just behind us, we've got that doorway where we moved to the central of the room because it was really key when you walk through into the walk-in wardrobe, that door needed to come through the center space. We've obviously then plastered all the relevant wall. We put sound block on all of the walls which are connecting to the next door neighbor as well. And we've got a load of ducting still yeah, in Yeah, just right? while we're at it, I'd like to mention, I meant, we mentioned earlier the ducting, what we had to do in the bathroom upstairs yeah. to get the ducting. This is the ducting that they used, uh, pretty industrial. This is the size of the ducting we're having to hide. Anybody who knows air conditioners work with it, trying to lose this size pipe without then not making your joy structurally unsound. We then obviously then losing it through stud works. This is the foam that they have That's to it. clad round, isn't it, Brian? It is, yeah. I mean, so the the air ducting, and this stops the whole ducting from sweating. Yeah. And then obviously had creating a whole damp. So it's really important that this goes all the way around the ducting. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, it's been years since I've dealt with ducting. The only time I've ever dealt with it is in universities and schools. And I've never seen them put this on, but obviously this is part of a regulation, must be now, that yeah. you have to put on the duct tin. Yeah, but, uh, it adds another 40 mil, really, to the size of that. Look at the thickness of that on top, what we're gonna lose. We've got air conditioning in all of the top floor, and then in the master bedroom, there's air conditioning as well. Any project, Bryce, yeah. it, you, yeah. you're working away, and all of a sudden the client says, oh, I'd like to put, I, I wanna put, <laughs> the, do this or do yeah. that, and then obviously this was a great example, client turned around and said, Tone, I want to put air conditioning yeah. into my property and this is what we're doing now, so. This is the end result. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to throw this out to the plumbers. I don't know why this always happens, Brian, doesn't it? Oh, but look, yeah. this has happened. The plumber's getting up his floorboards and he's broken a bit of a board. Now, 
Yeah. This always happens. This is why it's so important to use reclaim board when you're going to be sanding a floor, because this always happens. Now, the one thing they do use, look, in the olden days, they didn't use these oval nails. They use cut class, and it's really important that, I can't keep stressing this enough, whenever you put a reclaim floor down, don't you, Brian? Always use- Always use cut class. Always use cut class nails, but obviously, he thinks I'm gonna magically glue this in here, and then nobody knows it. So, <laughs> no, we'll have to take this flooring up, we'll have to re jig it, a new piece of flooring in it to make it look absolutely spot on. The client wanted to sound block all of the chimney breasts on this side here, because obviously if they are family, they just wanted to make sure they had the soundproof for the neighbor. What we have been doing in here is we'll rip down the ceiling part here, because all of this ceiling here completely come away. So we try to leave the coving, but the one thing what will happen, we'll probably lose the coving now because the client's putting all new windows in here which is a, a bit of a shame, but we've got a cool guy called Alan who's gonna reinstate and match all of the COVID, and it's gonna look absolutely perfect. And what you can probably see behind you here, we've been working on the aircon units. Some special ducting got made, and it had to come in between the joists, and then I dropped down into see the brickwork so a vent could come through on this section here and the vent could come through on that section over there. So basically it's flow and return. We've got these special plastic in grills that are new out for this company. So what we said, we would definitely want to use them here because they look a lot uh, neater. They're trimless as well, so they look absolutely beautiful. So that's why I showed the clients the trimless feature that will go in. Coving we put back in. We've reinstated the old frame. That's all gone back in. Yeah. We will reinstate all of the pitch rail, which will go around. We've got loads of samples being sent off to joinery shop. They're literally running that off as we speak at the moment. I'm going to be working in this room in here. So this is going to become Tony's black hole of Calcutta, isn't yeah, it? That's one. Tony's room of doom. <laughs> you can't have had I can't have had it. I'm sure there's something else I can do. Yeah, yeah. I'll open the scaffold comes down and so I can start digging. Yeah, I see. Yeah. You know I mean? so, anyway, so yes, yeah, so this has become my room in here. So yeah. what we're gonna do, I'll quickly take you into here. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna drop the ceiling down here. I'm gonna create a massive ladder framework through here, which I'll do a video on how I'm getting over this. The ceiling height, I mean look, I'm on the ladder, I'm literally six, seven hundred mil up, I'm still a long way off it so the ceiling height is still going to be about 2.8 meters which is really tall isn't it for a ceiling oh, it really harbor. is mate yeah yeah so. the plumber's been working away getting his pipe working air ducting guy's getting on with this he hasn't finished yet he's got to do all the connections and then tape all this up but if i lean back here he's got to then do a connection and then bring it around and connect into here so it's a very tight knuckle he's got to do he's got to come up with a brand new kind of connection they're yeah. actually they're having that made fabricated aren't they yeah, yeah, they they are, they that, uh, specifically made for that yeah. application there. So. And then what we've then got to do is then we're going to insulate all of the stud work here. We've been building the stud work up at the moment. We're going to insulate all of this. We've got the ply gussets in, ready for the lights. They're going to go either side of the basin in here. You can see the basin, central location to the right centers to here, to the waist. We've got all the pipes then running out. We're going to clean all of this off. We we'll leave obviously these bits on there. We'll then start working and putting this bathroom together and that's why this section is going to be mine because Brian did the one upstairs, he's going to be getting on with it, the bathroom. In fact, I think you're doing the bathroom next door next, aren't you? I am, mate, yeah. Yeah, so That's I'm going to be doing this one, Brian's going to be doing that one. Yeah. And then we've got people working in the coach house, so yeah, so this is my room. Um, we got I don't the know why here. I volunteered going in this room, I should have gone to the bathroom room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, you Too late. You've committed. <laughs> yeah, I'm committed now. <laughs> so yeah, so basically we're going to work in here, and then uh, somebody wants to know how long this would take me to do start to finish it probably took me about a week and a half probably a week best case scenario but about a week and a half yeah mate. <laughs> yeah 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 might move a little bit because I, I do have to go around the other sides but probably about how long does the other one upstairs take you mate i on off i went on it on off on off yeah, on yeah, off. yeah, yeah, yeah oh, come on yeah. you did force me to do a uh, loft hatch oh that's uh, yeah, a, yeah that's a, yeah and also but twice. Uh, yeah, yeah and i went on holiday, yeah, holiday twice, twice yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so uh no you're you're about right about a week and a half what's about a week and a half two weeks so there you go there's my target i've got to get done we've got to get it done it's going to so take the mick out of me, I tell you. you know, so, so there's the challenge. Yeah. <laughs>